Hey, welcome to our 100th episode of To Debate, the podcast of debates with your fabulous clone number 753, a.k.a. Sebastian. How are you doing 393. today? 393. 393. Okay. Yeah, I still haven't retired. 393. I think, I think He's been going on for the past four years, still going on strong. <laughs> People who haven't been around from beginning have no idea what that weird reference uh, means, right? So a little piece of explanation here. Sebastian claims that he's immortal mainly because he's cloning himself. That's actually what we had in one of our debates. We discussed if it should be legal and desirable even to, to clone yourself. Yeah, so welcome, Sebastian. And I'm, of course, the other host of this beautiful debating podcast, Dirk, not a clone, clone, not immortal. The not... non-cloned, yes. the unique, the very special, <laughs> the European, the, the German. Pure. Well, you're the Swiss. <laughs> you're the future not Swiss. Yet, not yet. Not yet. Future Swiss. Working on yeah. it. Future Swiss, um, prior French, Polish dude. <laughs> <laughs> or do you have do you have clones in each of these countries by the way like oh, you know Lord, a version of you you have sebastian you Chinsky, my... no chinsky sebastian chinsky in in poland and uh sebastian clement in, actually in france you'd and... be surprised i have people who have exactly the same names uh, uh the same name as i do <laughs> thankfully i've added my mother's maiden name clement which makes it unique Okay. Thankfully, but you'd be surprised. Actually, there's not not just one, but a couple or more uh, people on this planet who are still alive and actually younger than me who have the exact same name. So even though I have almost no vowels in my family name, it is still uh, apparently widespread to not just one. What about you? Um, well, I are you unique? I'm I'm special. unique. I don't clone myself. I'm not very special, but definitely unique. <laughs> <laughs> um, and still German, intend to stay German for a while longer, uh, at, at the very least until the end of that lockdown, right? <laughs> Speaking of citizenship, I discovered that, I believe it was until 1999, that Germany did not, uh, uh, sorry, in 1999, Germany allowed its citizens to have a dual citizenship. Yep. It's one of the last countries in Europe to open up. Uh, in Switzerland, it was 92, and since then, it, it, it's... Uh, led to a surge in request for citizenship. But until then, 92 in Switzerland, 99 in Germany, if I'm not mistaken, it was actually not possible. I, d- I did not know this. And I do have to say, uh, dual citizenship would have been a fabulous debating topic, right? So maybe maybe before we jump into this, um, let's explain our listeners really briefly what we are up to today. Because the 100th episode is a special episode, so we are not in it for debate. It's a special episode, especially, I don't know if you noticed this, Dirk, it's exactly four years, yes. almost to the day, almost to the day that we released the first episode. I know it sounds it sounds insane, but if you look at the date of the release, it was 1st of December for the welcoming to our new podcast and the 15th of December for the very first episode. And we're recording this today, 16th of December 2020, four years down the road. Uh, so... Uh, Woohoo! Happy Woo-hoo. birthday to us! Four years. Just to announce that we're shutting down the shop. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for all those who are scared now that we might just do that, no. But we have a bit of a uh, appetite for change, right? So uh, <gasps> change will, is scary. Will, and change is change scary. Is frightening. Yes, yes. Um, but the Don't good thing is, more uncertainty. Twenty twenty was uncertain enough, and risky enough, and scary enough. Yeah, we may consider. Derek, please. We may consider swapping your clone for some other clone, but the listeners will not notice. Same voice. This is sexist same... comment. Are you saying you're not happy with the dude, as you said <laughs> earlier on, when I thought this was a non-gendered <laughs> debate? Do you want to go back to episode number 49, when we said quotas help diversity, really? Let me refresh your memory, my dear friend, and what you said back then. Um, speaking Sorry, of which, speaking of which um, refreshing your memory... Shall we have a look at that weird leaderboard that we took so seriously for the first half? And where I are we? I did look at it. And who won? <laughs> I don't know if it was. <laughs> I didn't look at the bottom. I look at the at the top uh, score, and I'm I uh, I'm humble enough to say that my clone won. Uh huh. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, overall, we we released ninety nine debates over the years. 
and you won by three debates. I would say we are pretty even, right? It's like it's it was a close Dirk. call, a close race. Dirk, it's just like elections. Yes, it was close, but there's one winner, and I am sorry. Yeah, but of course, if you measure by the number of votes, which is an alternative measurement that the <laughs> dashboard presents, then I win with 11 more don't votes. Try, don't try the popular vote. Do not try that on me. Do not. I've heard that trick before. It is only the electoral college that matters. Where does the debate go and where is it leaning? I, the actually, majority went to me. Speaking of which, right, we started, we started our podcast in the year Trump was elected and we end our podcast or not. No, we don't end it. We end this season of this podcast in the year he was voted out of office. And may I say so, he has been now voted out of office for like almost three weeks. Like uh, we watched him losing that election over and over and over again for a couple of weeks now. <laughs> Um, and he was a, fr a close friend of the the, the podcast. Uh, actually, uh, we we kind of got I don't know how many, but we probably got like twenty or so debates that were somehow inspired by actions Trump decided to take during his time in office. He was a constant well, it, theme in our and all the other debates. He was a constant theme as well. So basically, if you and follow if you've along, not listen to if you've not listened to our previous debates, I encourage you to listen to debate number. 27 go back on our website or in your favorite podcast app when we actually had donald trump on our podcast uh-huh teasing teasing <laughs> oh no that was about fake news wasn't it shit yes it was about fake news we talked about <laughs> fake news i thought you were going to say you thought about inviting donald trump or his sons or his daughter to this podcast thank you for being so well, kind to me we, we called out so many times and he never answered oh And that's a perfect transition to explain what we're going to do today, to explain how we're wrapping up that very long four-year season. Yes. What are we doing today? Uh, we, are, we are going over our debates a little bit. So like uh, looking at the themes that we saw, looking at maybe also some of the um, ideas that we played around with. Some of the debates stuck with us. Some of the debates, uh, looking through the back catalog, uh, I had a couple of debates where I looked at it and like, what? We discussed this? I, I don't recall what we actually talked about. Maybe I should re-listen to it. Um, but others were actually very present for me. Maybe we also talk a little bit about favorite or least favorites or special episodes. I don't know. Maybe we get around to okay. this. Yeah. Let's go down memory lane. The very first debate was inspired by Elon Musk, right? That was the first one, Mars. Uh, is it worth going to the planet Mars? And what is interesting is that four years down the road, uh, we're actually getting a little bit closer to it, right? The objective remains the same. It has not wavered, uh, which sometimes, you know, with this big lofty goal, sometimes you just announce them and then they just, okay, it gets delayed further and further. And I believe the schedule is still roughly the same He had mentioned four years ago to be on the planet by 2024. I think it's 2025 now, his latest announcement. I saw this a few weeks ago, but it's still roughly on schedule. So yeah. that's, I think, an interesting one. I do, any, I do, any thoughts I do on believe, that one? I do think uh, I remember that uh, it's not exactly up to him because it also depends a little bit on where where Mars is at any given point. I, I do believe I remember that Mars is uh, close to Earth at that time. That's why yeah, the they The window put, of opportunity, yeah. indeed. I think every two years, the, yes. the, the Earth planets are, have the shortest distance between them. So yeah. that's correct. Yes. So, um, yeah, I, that was... I, know, I know you started with the, the very first one, but we also, do we want, also want to tease our listeners by telling them that after we go through memory lane and through our past debates, we'll give a, some... Uh, insights into what we'll do next year yes right so yes. you have to stay tuned until the end to know what's coming up and since we and align with uh, the u.s presidencies we kind of have the the fixed idea that we may start the next season on the inauguration day right this so, is the inauguration day of season two of two debate <laughs> don't miss it and the date is in all your with calendars 20th of january 2021 yeah and it's going to be the largest crowd ever period of course Yes. By the way, uh, although I used to be, I used to be an, uh, a Catholic, I'm not a believer anymore. But 20th of January, Dirk, you shall know that this is the celebration of a saint. Which whose one? His name, Holy goes Sebastian. By. It is Saint Sebastian, 20th of January. Wow. Who was a martyr in so, the Roman Empire and was claiming his faith, and is known to be have been uh, stuck by arrows, like or killed by arrows from his own. Um, Uh, soldiers. He was uh, 
army, one of our chief under in the Roman Empire. And the guy did not die, apparently, from the wounds of the arrows. He's often depicted uh, with all these arrows inside his body. Uh, he apparently recovered from it. He went back to the emperor and saying, see, you should, re you should repent for your sins. What do you think the emperor did? Shoot him again? Yeah, shot him again. <laughs> and <he died. laughs> so some people called Sebastian are a bit stubborn. You will have noticed. So, <laughs> so why is he and again dumb. a saint again? Is it is it for his was, intelligence or standing up to the a, emperor? Or no, what? he was he was a Catholic, right? He was pushing for the faith ah. of uh, Christianity. So he was put to death for that reason the first time and the second time i guess for just the emperor you know imagine this guy what i just shot him he's back oh, go away <laughs> anyway 20th of january is a is a date you cannot forget it's our inauguration the biggest crowd ever yeah and saint sebastian you have to do me a favor and connect back on 20th of january but this is we'll explain a bit more towards the end of this episode what we'll do yeah. then so stay with us What are the other episodes that are the big themes? Maybe do we want to talk about Trump? We mentioned about Trump a little bit. Yeah, we had a few a few debates about on on him. So or related yeah, to him. if I if I if I type in Trump now in our back catalog and hit the search episode button, I'm finding. Do I see the total number here somewhere? Fifteen, fifteen episodes where it had had uh, apparently uh, some some relation to Trump, and we have su such beauties like let's get rid of diplomatic protocols. That was in yes. preparation of that summit where he met Kim Jong Un, I think. Um, Correct. Uh, or we had um, should Twitter ban Trump? That was episode, by the way, number thirty-three. Yes, uh, that we recorded. Uh, a while ago just i'm just giving you the number so that if you're interested if you listen to us and you want to go back to those uh you'll have you'll find the number uh, very quickly yes of all the of all the debates about trump that we had the one that i i personally find the the most interesting is a, a question that we ask one year into trump's presidency we ask is it worth having a trump that was the debate we had uh 2d 27 was that correct and now yep, we can of course one. ask ourselves was it worth having had a trump what do you think i have a few well, notes about this you 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 back then you said you argued for the motion back then so you said it's worth having a trump and i was against it i still hope that trump has a net positive effect like you know he Absolutely. exposed so many weaknesses of uh, not only the u.s system but actually all our systems there are plenty of systems where even european countries can think to themselves huh <laughs> we never we never thought about this particular idea or so um maybe maybe it leads to some some things being fixed um also i think It exposed uh, an, a lot of divides, not only in the U.S. So maybe, maybe that was worth it. Uh, but overall, I would say he did way more damage than good. Under Trump, drone strike killings had a new high. We had a debate about extrajudicial killings. By the way, no other U.S. president killed that many people silently as uh, the Trump administration decided to do. On that topic, by the way, I also read this morning that he's ordered more executions, uh, capital punishment executions at the federal level than all of the state governors combined. Yeah, It seemed to be a first, I don't know, but just to give a, a perspective, because you know, maybe in the past the US was putting to death a number of criminals, maybe way more than today, I don't know, but at least from the perspective, it seems it's it stands out that from the federal level, it has been way more than what the state governors have uh, yeah. uh, wanted to do. He kind of ran on the idea of, of draining the swamp and then was the most openly corrupt politician I have ever seen in the US, honestly. Others others at least try to hide it, while Trump is basically trying to claim that he's uh, under constant witch hunt and then thinks out loud about stuff like pre-pardoning himself and his, his children. Um, I mean... I don't think the damage was necessarily worth it, but maybe there's some good that comes from it. I, I really hope that, that it will. What is your opinion on it? I, I had jotted down the exact same things. So I'm not going to go into the details about exposing the flaws of democracies 
in particular in the US, but also in general. But there's one more thing, which I think I, I would stand by my assertion that it is worth to have someone like him in a position of power, especially now that we know he's gone. And if he had continued for another four years, then I would may have changed my, my point of view. But now it's maybe possible to fix some of these things before it was completely too late. Specifically, why I think it's worth having someone like him in a position of extreme power it's because it also underlies, it uh, uh, emphasizes the number of people who have voted for someone yeah. whose lies and corruption have been exposed over four years. Despite all this, he's probably the second candidate in the entire U.S. presidential election history to have had as many votes, even though he lost. He has a point, right? He has, there's no president ever who has gone for an, uh, a second round of election after being already the uh, the president with 74 million people voting for that I, person. I would even go one step further. No president in history, and I would say no democratic leader in, history, in the history of the world mobilized so many people to vote for or against him. So in a way, that was like a triumph and a fest for democracy. And it was also interesting to watch how resilient the system actually proved to be in the end. Because He was really fighting against it. And the, the Republicans were in a pickle, right? Uh, with, with a president that just mobilized 70 million people, they couldn't just fight against him. So they had to be, they basically had to allow him trying to, to topple that election result. And watching this unfold, it gave me hope that it's actually as resilient as it proved to be. I didn't. I, I didn't hold my breath necessarily. I was not sure if this would be the outcome of it, but uh, it looks like actually by now we are we are getting into a calm, a calm waters there. Oh, I, I wanted to actually raise a point which which is separate from the aspect of the resilience of democracy, yeah. and that point was highlighting how, despite exposing very openly and very visibly all the lies, the, the, the mistruths, the corruption of the administration over the past four years. Despite that, people are still voting in masses. And I think the, the, the good thing in the, in the story, I think this, the, the silver lining is that it exposes that and the fact that it needs to be addressed. If 74 million people are still voting for someone who's very clearly corrupt and lying yeah. thousands of times and thousands is not an uh, is not an overstatement it's not an exact an exaggeration then there is a problem somewhere which needs to be addressed and trump is just the symbol of it I so agree. yep i'm glad that he's gone and i think a lot of people are glad that he's gone but still 74 million people plus those who didn't vote who still support trump and people like him this is this is a concern and that needs to be addressed And this is just, it's just a U.S. not just a U.S. problem. This is also a problem for other democracies, where thankfully maybe extreme parties are not in a position of power. But we do have these extreme points of views in France, in Germany, in Switzerland, and you need to acknowledge them. You can't just pretend, "Great, the guy's gone. The problem is gone." No, in fact, it's very, very interesting and very important that we take into account that 50 percent, almost of the population is actually still ready to vote for someone who's that bad. What does this tell us about, first of all, human psychology, but secondly, about preserving essential democratic rights or human rights if you have half the population which is ready to vote for extreme things or extreme people? Yeah. Uh, so it, it, I'm not so optimistic, but uh, I think it's this is, this is the value of having a Trump, uh, I think, and thankfully not having one At the, at the head of the state anymore. And I think it's worth revisiting some of the debates we had about him, especially in lights of uh, changes. So we debated, for instance, if, if we should preemptively nuke North Korea. Thankfully, we didn't. But I, I happen to notice that North Korea, I believe, still has nuclear weapons, so he didn't solve for this problem either. This was, by the way, this is episode 13 Uh, and three and a half years down the road, after we had that debate, the latest research has shown that North Korea has advanced even more quickly in its nuclear weaponry than it was expected. Now, possibly it's because of links to Iran, maybe to Pakistan, maybe to China. Whatever the reason, it is the intelligence in our 
Western world that it is believed that North Korea is way more advanced in that area. So the problem remains, to your point, Trump is almost a side note at this point because that was a clown showing with a dictator of North Korea. But what do we do? Uh, it'll be interesting to see what uh, the UN and the, the new US administration decide to do on that, on that aspect. Yeah, I agree. So moving on from Trump, I encourage our listeners to give it a, a, a glance and then think of yourself how well those episodes aged. I think they actually held up pretty well. So looking back, I, I was not completely embarrassed by some of the motions we had. Out of the other big cluster we had, so politics obviously and society was a very big cluster. The other big cluster we had, and that's not a surprise, given that we are two white dudes working in a tech company, was our technological future. We talked about yep. cloning, we talked about computer tech, AI, and yep. my personal favorite about all those episodes, uh, on all those episodes, was uh, 2D44, which was the motion, flying cars, not underground tunnels, are the future. And uh, that was where you basically were arguing for flying cars. Are you still... Was I? Uh, are, you, are you holding that position? You still think flying cars are the future, Sebastian? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you caught me because I can't remember what I was supporting. <laughs> and, and, the, and the great value of doing a debate like this, in addition of escaping our filter bubbles, is that it forces us to really adopt um, a side the point of view that we may not have chosen by default. Uh, and and the and the de perfect demonstration of this is that I don't even remember which side I was on. I can see pros and cons of both uh, for many of our debates, by the way. No, I don't I don't remember. But why do I think today flying cars? I don't see them. Do, do you see them outside? No, I mean, neither. Window? I still think it's mm. a stupid idea, though. But uh, <laughs> I, it was a very fun debate. It was a very interesting debate and were, were um, points I really liked. And you said something very important. I remember I still remember how nervous I was hopping on the very first debate we had. And one thing I really quickly learned was that I don't have to play anything or pretend anything in order to debate. The only thing I need to do is I need to think about arguments that would work for me. I learned that there is a valid path of reasoning for pretty much anything that I could get behind. And it made me humble. Before that, I thought when I had arguments laid out i i kind of felt like being on the right side of this i felt like oh i saw facts and this is clearly the right the right side our project forced me to pick the other side and more often than not i came out a little bit confused uh like you know at the, in the end it felt like hey this it's just as valid and it taught me an important lesson uh that uh that that makes me in my daily uh, that in my daily routine in my daily life in real world arguments i think i'm better in discussing things, better in understanding people's positions, better in being careful not to judge too quickly and not jump to conclusions. So that was a big learning for me. That's a totally fair point. I have the exact same impression. In fact, if there's one piece of advice that we can give to our listeners is in, the, in your relationships, in your personal relationships, in your work relationships, if you find yourself in a position of stark disagreement with someone, try it for a few minutes. Try to take their point of view. And see if, what if you had to defend that point of view? What would you say? And try to be honest and sincere with the arguments you would put forward. And to your point, Derek, the arguments that are coherent with your value system. And I think it's a very worthwhile exercise. It's not easy when emotions are high, especially in personal relationships. But at least at work and hopefully also in your personal life, you can try this. And indeed, uh, indeed the humbles, um, I think, you and whoever tries that exercise in trying to get a, a better understanding of the other point of view. In the same realm, by the way, you mentioned uh, flying cars, underground tunnels, uh, and in terms of, uh, I guess, slightly related to this is taxis and car sharing. We had uh, a, a few debates around um, robot, robots e eating jobs, the share economy is a scam. Would Uber be ever profitable? That was... <laughs> I think debate number I think 83. that's a clear no. <laughs> a clear no uh, at the moment. Um, but that was also a number of uh, topics we had around this. Debate 23 was robots. Are robots eating jobs? 24 is share economy uh, a scam. And number 83 is Uber. Uh, will Uber and ever be profitable? Is there a debate that you are embarrassed about or where you, where you wish we never had that or where you felt awkward about? No, there is I nothing I... 
maybe maybe one where I feel my <laughs> predictions were wrong. Um, Which was? We talk, you're talking about technology. And I have here number 59 and 80. 59 is uh, Facebook is dead. <laughs> Clearly, Facebook is not dead. That was uh, a few a couple of years ago. We debated about this. Although what's interesting is that we also debated uh, uh, episode 80, for those of you who missed that one, shall we break up Facebook? Uh, now, it's a little bit awkward to have the discussion today when you have uh, increasing loud calls across both sides of the Atlantic calling for big tech to be broken up, uh, including our own company, which we can't really talk about. But that was one where clearly I was wrong because I was, I think, debated. I was, I was uh, defending Facebook, Facebook is dead. But I guess the debate about well, shall we broke, break it up remains per- particularly valid. So uh, it'd be interesting to listen to that one again. Yeah, um, I have a candidate for a debate. I I still think is actually that was a debate worth not having, but it's still in our back catalog. So if people want to listen back to this, um, whether or not homeopathy is a medicine, ah. that would be my candidate for something that actually... I, knew, I didn't want to bring this one up because we talked about it a few <laughs> times. Because uh, I thought about it when you mentioned, you know, you've always gave arguments which are in line with your value yeah, system. And this that's one the was the exception. Yeah, that was the exception. I really had a hard time with that debate. And that I don't like think one it of the was... very early ones, right? Like in, yeah. a, in the first 10 episodes, I can't remember. On the positive side, we had a few fun debates as well. And uh, I would like to call out episode 28, which was Star Wars is overrated, where we talked, uh, we, where, we, where we even debated, in the course of that debate, we came even to Shakespeare as a debating topic. And you made a case <laughs> that, in your opinion, Shakespeare is overrated as well. And so <laughs> if, if anyone wants to have a little bit of banter in her, uh, her or his life, this is a good episode to start with it. And you don't need to know much about Star Wars or Star Trek or these kind of things. Don't worry. You can still listen to it. You just need a very superficial knowledge. In terms of predictions that were completely wrong also, because I remember suggesting that motion, that was uh, February 2018, almost three years ago, episode 36, a financial crash is coming. Run. Yeah, it's interesting because there was no financial crash since then, but there was a, a stock market crash earlier this year because of completely unrelated reasons. But are we out of the woods just yet? Are we yeah. out of the woods? That is maybe another question to have. Yeah. Go ahead. You were about to say something. Yeah, I was about uh, to say that in episode 94, we come to the end now of our catalog a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Is the world capable of dealing with a global pandemic was the question. And of course, you you defended the notion that, uh, that uh, you uh, defended the thought that we are completely incapable. And I would say the jury is still out on that. It's like uh, we 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 kind of we are kind of fight our way through with some parts of the world doing remarkably well and some parts of the world failing. It's an interesting test case for the various systems we had. Just one one little nugget here that I wanted to throw in. I find it very interesting that even even dictatorships seem to battle the pandemic in a humanistic way, which I found very interesting to see. Not a single country actually said, like, you know what, let people die. We don't care. Every single country tries to fight this and protect the, the weak and all that, which is an interesting observation, I think. The, what surprises me in hindsight is I think during that debate, I was praising Germany for its handling of the pandemic at the time. And what surprises me is that most countries which did, which were praised for doing okay or well initially turned out to mess it up afterwards and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Some of the countries which messed it up initially uh, then managed to do a little bit better further down the road. Yeah. And there's a number of examples like this. The ones which were praised were Germany, Switzerland, Taiwan. Taiwan seems to be off the hook and seems to be doing fine. But Germany and Switzerland in the past few months, if you look at the infection rate and this seemingly lack of control by the by the governments, it seems pretty much of a disaster story. Um, vice versa, maybe France is doing a, has done it maybe a little bit better. It's not even too sure. Maybe like very average in the ranking. Maybe the UK they, by pushing through the vaccine you know, in the past few weeks, although I, they have a, a surge in infections. I guess the What's question is I guess the question is how you measure the uh, success here right so um if well, you simply, is there anyone left uh, breathing yeah but uh, even <laughs> by that measurement we actually do better than some if we could so uh, in comparison 
I would say in terms of economic crisis and in terms of, say, personal devastation, people not know, uh, who don't know how to pay for the rent and food anymore and, and all the side effects of an economy shutting down, Many of the examples that you gave, many European countries still do much better than, than for instance, the US. I mean, it's like in, in Germany, we have barely more people unemployed than in, in, a, uh, like in, the, in the Euro crisis, at the height of the Euro crisis, which is a remarkable feat in itself. Mm. Um, so I do think this is a discussion that's worth having in, in probably one or two years from now, uh, when we have a chance to look back, right? You mentioned uh, dictatorships. I'm jumping to another one. It's debate number 68, which we talked about two years ago, almost February 2019. Time passes. It's crazy. This debate, number 68, was about whether the US and Europe were right to uh, legitimize the self-declared president of Venezuela. And two years down the road, there's still no solution there, which is interesting, which shows kind of in hindsight, you know, maybe Europe and the US made a mistake in a way i'm not saying of, of course that maduro is any any, any pleasant and friendly uh, character but you know, what's the point of, de of declaring president someone who's effectively has no power and it's been two years what does that mm -hmm. exactly mean to say hey well done your president but you're not supporting them in any other way or at least visible way before we touch on our plans for the future we had a few special episodes as well and i like to call out two that um, are that were especially special <laughs> one was uh, we had a debate that was episode 54 um, that was on the 27th of September in 2018 where we talked about genetic engineering and we had um, a student group joining us explaining us uh, to us the value of public information regarding genetic engineering and the power of making this kind of technology Basically, public domain, right? That was more or less the topic Correct. we talked about. That was, I think, a highlight in our podcast that we initially hoped to do more often. In fact, if you have an interesting point of view on any topic in general, this may be a call to action. To you, our listeners, don't hesitate. Email us. You're all experts of one specific area or field or you have something to talk about. And if we have a matching interest, then we'd love to invite you as a guest on our next season. So don't hesitate, email us. It's as simple as that. We don't bite. And it's it's maybe easier than ever to hop on a, on a recording. So um, yeah. Um, the other special uh, with, uh, which I want to call out was uh, we had an entire episode talking about rhetoric, like the, the art of the argument, right? And for that, we invited an expert, the book author, Jay Heinrichs, That was a one-hour episode from 25th of April, 2018. If you want to go back in our archives, it's a one-hour episode, really one of the fun ones. We have 104 episodes. If you, if you add up everything, it's just including specials yes. and the intro and the happy holidays. Yes, that's, that's right. So I think many podcasts don't even make it to the hundred. And I personally, I can say that back, in, uh, back then when we were having lunch together and envisioned doing some, some kind of debating podcast, I wouldn't have guessed that we are debating for four years. And it won me a friend over those four years. So you're a very, very important part of my life now. Not only, Aww. but in the beginning through that podcast. So thank you for debating for four years with me. I hope we continue debating going forward likewise so what are we going to do going forward you want to share with our listeners what are our plans that the, and they should tune up on inauguration day <laughs> january 20th 2021 yeah birthday of the famous saint sebastian or was it a death day or what is it for, what i kind of don't day know what does it correspond to but it's the day Name when day, the saint is celebrated whatever day yeah saint sebastian day um yeah um so we thought You know, over the over the in the beginning, we were very strict in our structure. So we basically had um, our segments that were always like the backbone of our debating format. And then in the beginning, I started having a little bit of uh, you know cutouts, uh, funny jokes, things we played as a nugget at the end of the episode. That was basically for the first 10 or 20 episodes the format we had. At some point, 
we because we usually continued discussing after our actual debate. So we would have our debate and then we continued um, and the recording obviously continued as well. At some point, I started adding those discussions to our formats and I heard plenty of comments that people enjoyed our debates but also enjoyed our our discussions that we had after after the actual recording so going forward we decided that we want to double down on that we think a little bit more of a free-ranging conversation is maybe worthwhile having uh, maybe we can have a better balance of topics that way have more than one topic per episode is a thought that we have mm -hmm. maybe as sebastian hinted invite guests into the uh, podcast format so we will stay true to the idea of having a controversial motion and talk about it but we will probably free up the structure a little bit be more conversational in the end did i describe it well sebastian what do you think yes um in fact, I, I also wanted to emphasize the reason why we want to do this is also to kick a new momentum. You may have noticed that we've been a little bit less frequent in releasing our episodes. We used to have a 10-day frequency. I was just checking our stats from two years ago. Two years ago, we had released 60 episodes. So in two years, we only released 40 uh, since then. Um, and back then, we had 20,000 downloads. So I guess we're maybe around 30,000 today, 40,000, roughly that order of magnitude. So it's not that we didn't get a, a welcoming reception, I guess, from, from you, our listeners. And thank you for listening all along or recently, if you've just joined. It's really for us to try and find a new life into this uh, uh, debate format and being maybe, as you said, less structured, less formal. Uh, it doesn't prevent us from coming back to anything else or to that format later in time if we want to. But hopefully it will make things more dynamic and give us a new uh, energy into doing uh, debating and different points of views along the same uh, rough themes that we've covered so far. So that's usually politics, tech, and current affairs, current news, basically. Yeah. We, we think about, as I said, we think about um, having additional voices on the podcast how that will look in the end depends a little bit on uh, who signs up for it right so if you feel like oh i would like to be a voice on that podcast feel free to reach out the second little innovation maybe will be maybe having a one or two questions at the end of our each of our episodes which will be a bit fun or funny uh, not necessarily related to the debate at hand but you'll have to tune in to know what that is about so yeah a few uh a few innovations, a few improvements here and there to make it a little bit more entertaining. Let's see. Yes. And about the guests, by the way. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but let me call it out. We are two Europeans, two men working in tech, both white. So we also hope with the introduction of that concept of having a third host joining in, be that a guest or maybe maybe some people show up more regular. Maybe we, we turn up having four in the end. Who knows? We do want to have people on the show that uh, represent the opposite side of the argument, but also maybe different, different ways of life, different perspectives, different cultural backgrounds. So we want to open this up a little bit more. All right. All right. I think that's it, right? I we think have a that nice round up, round up of our uh, episodes, the 100 episodes that we've recorded. We gave you a a teaser of what's to come so we'll be preparing this for the new year which hopefully will be a new optimistic positive happy sane healthy year for everybody who's listening and those who are not listening because we wish well yeah with that thank you sebastian for debating 100 times with me or 99 times and to our listeners most of our debates age pretty well, so maybe this is a good opportunity to take, uh, take a, a look at some of the classics. We go on our holiday break, and we will be back in your ears early January or mid-January. And don't, if you've not listened to our previous episodes, of course, you're free to listen to them. As you, It remains free. It will remain free. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, I don't think they've aged too much for most of them. And who knows what happens in 2021 before the next crisis, the asteroid crashing down on Earth and destroying all the archives of the internet and beyond then yep. maybe you want to listen to us during the holidays or corona um, um changes and we we have a zombie apocalypse after all whatever may happen we will be in your ears on the 20th of january and uh yeah thanks a lot thanks for listening thank you thank you for listening and thank you to you Derek. happy holidays happy holidays mm -hmm.